Let's look at how to use waypoints to build a track in Huravac's Storm Simulator. This video is intended for Huravac users who are already experienced with getting around in the workspace and are interested in using the program's Storm Simulator feature to support training exercises. Specifically, we'll show you how to do two things. One, build a storm track that is similar to one that happened in recent years but quickly changed some details to make a realistic what-if scenario. And two, Take the simulated storm you're working on and shift it across the map while keeping its spacing and timing intact. This video won't teach you all the steps for building or using a simulated storm, but it may help you speed up the process. If you'd like to learn more about Storm Simulator, you can quickly open that section of the Huravac user guide by clicking the question mark icon in the upper right corner of the panel. Be sure to check out the FAQ page for additional tips. For some quick background, waypoints are like the outline or draft of a simulated storm. You work with waypoints before you get to the steps when Huravac generates the storm's details, like forecasts and wind products. Waypoints look like these map markers that contain numbers and are connected by a red line. There are two different ways you can get waypoints. The first way is entirely based on user input. Click Add Waypoints and place them manually, one by one, by clicking a path on the map. When you're starting out, think about it like you're putting down one waypoint for each day in the life of the storm, and the computer will fill in the rest of the details later. When you're finished with the path, click Done Waypoints. This is just a quick glance at the process. There's more adjusting you can do via the waypoint table, which we'll come back to later in the video. This is the way to make a completely custom storm, but it also requires the most input. The second way to get waypoints on the map is to let Huravac import waypoints based on a real storm from the archives. Huravac has all Atlantic Basin storms since 2005. This can be an efficient way to make a what-if scenario. To get started, just have your storm of interest selected in the Storms tab so it's showing up on the map. For this demonstration, we'll import Hurricane Michael from 2018 and alter the track. Let's say the purpose of a training exercise, for example, is to create a storm that resembles Michael in many aspects. But for the simulation, the storm will make landfall in a different part of the Gulf Coast, closer to the Tampa Bay area. To get started, click Import Current Storm and choose Sample Waypoints from the list. In this pop-up window, we'll give the storm a different name and select a new starting date. This quickly builds a storm outline based on Michael. It's not an exact copy because the point of this approach is to make some changes. One way to change things is to edit the position of each waypoint one at a time. First, look at the waypoint table and click the black map marker icon in the Move column. Choose the one that corresponds to the waypoint number you're interested in moving. The selected waypoint is highlighted in red. Then, click on the map at the spot where you would like to relocate that waypoint. Note that you can also zoom in and out of the map view while you're doing this, which can help you place the marker with more precision. Because we're moving waypoint number 5 here, we also want to change the surrounding waypoints to make the path more realistic. But if all you wanted to do was nudge the entire storm track in a particular direction, this approach would be a lot of unnecessary clicking. Here's where you can try a shortcut. Click Shift Track. That button is right beneath the waypoint table in between Shift Dates and Clear. Let's reset the view and import Hurricane Michael again to see how it works. Once you click Shift Track, this animated red square draws your attention to the Move column. There, you'll choose one waypoint to shift by clicking on the black map marker icon in its row. The activated waypoint turns red. You can make a shift based on any of the waypoints, but it might be easier to use one that is already closer to your area of interest. In this case, we will shift the track based on waypoint number 5 because it's the one closest to landfall. Finally, click on the map where you want the waypoint to move. But when you use this option, the spacing and timing of all the other waypoints will shift relative to this new selection. Once you've shifted the track, the mouse or pointer behavior resets to normal. 
if you want to do some further adjustment, you could repeat the same steps. You could still move one particular waypoint to your liking. You can also click Add Waypoints to place more at the end of the path, or delete a waypoint by clicking the trash can icon in the Delete column. But there's one important thing you want to be aware of. Does the storm still have a realistic strength at each waypoint? This is something you'll already have to do if you manually created your waypoints, because by default, each one you add is at tropical depression strength. But pay attention to the waypoints you've shifted, especially if they are near the storm's interaction with land. Maybe in this example, waypoint number 6, which is currently set to category 3, should be weakened further to show more effect of the storm passing over land. To do that, you click directly on the entry in the Strength column, select a new option from the list, then make sure you click the nearby Update button. Maybe waypoints number 7 and 8 could be strengthened, since the storm is now positioned over water, unlike the original path of Michael we imported, which had it over land at the time. The next step in Storm Simulator is to build the track, which fills in a square icon for all advisories at 6 hour intervals based on the outline of the waypoints. But at this step, there's no longer a way to quickly shift the entire track as we just demonstrated. If you click Edit Track and open the Storm Editor tab, you can adjust details for one advisory at a time. That's good for fine-tuning, but a comprehensive shift can only be done when you're at the waypoint step. So if you have a track but find that there's still a lot you'd like to change, you also have the option to click Go Back. That removes the track and sends you back to the waypoint step where you can make more changes. Then click Build Track again to generate an updated version.